Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, January 18th, and thank you so much for joining in to our weekly healthcare reform webinars. We do have a lot to discuss today. Uh, my name is Deb Wilkinson. I'm the Vice President of the Health Plan Options Department here at URL, and uh, you know we have a team behind uh, this, this agency and uh, a team that's definitely educated and willing and able to assist you. Um, there, for those of you that are new to this format, there are a couple ways that you can ask questions, and questions are definitely encouraged. We all learn from questions, including myself. Um, but if you're new to this format, you can uh, raise your electronic hand, which is the uh, little hand icon in the control panel to the right of your screen, or you can type in questions in the question box, and I'll answer those at the end of the webinar. Um, just with a show of hands, if you can hear me and see my screen okay, if you could just raise your electronic hand, awesome, thank you so much, appreciate that. I'll put all the hands down now, and let's just get right into it. Um, we talked a little bit uh, last week about the Association Health, Health Plans Executive Order back from October, but it's really just now getting traction and started the 60-day um, comment period. But these changes to allow it easier, allow it to be easier for uh, people within associations to have a collective health plan um, would mean possible changes to ERISA. To well, not even possible changes. Po changes to ERISA to allow full props and small employers, et cetera, to band together. Uh, to form large employer groups. And what they say is that it could be um, businesses within the same uh, realm, if you will, nationally, uh, you know, throughout different states, or businesses in different industries, but in the same state. So not sure how it's all going to pan out. Um, you know, our leg uh, legislative uh, chair for uh, PayWho really thinks that it's it's going to be a big nothing burger because of some of the challenges that um, will come from trying to change these laws. I mean, think about it. You have a sole prop in Texas that is part of this association. He or she quits their job, um, their own job. <laughs> and, you know, what what's done about COBRA? Um, what are the continuation options for these folks? Uh, it could get a little messy, and uh, you know, it, 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 we have a lot of details to work out. Clearly, um, but I wanted you to be aware of it. Also, um, I'm sure if you've been watching the news, you know that the, the uh, continuing resolution is up at midnight on Friday. So it looks like they are going to have another continuing resolution because they can't get the um, you know the full funding bill through. Um, but there are three three components of the uh, continuing resolution that are, are less controversial, but um, you know could have an impact. Another delay of the medical device tax for two years. Uh, the delay would be uh, made until sales, uh, or for, there would be no medical device tax unless the sales would be made after 1231 of 2019. So that's uh, the delay. That adds, that's about a 2.3% tax on certain medical devices. And of course, that all goes back to the consumer. So um, again, the 1231-19 sales after that date. And you can see that my, my um, dates are a little bit messed up. There are two articles and they have conflicting information, but uh, the three, the three uh, taxes are still addressed. It's, it's might just be a, a little bit um, loose on the actual effective date of these um, these bills. I did include this article that I'm referring to. This one just came out yesterday as opposed to the one that came out on uh, Tuesday that had differing dates. But um, let's continue. Uh, again, the medical device tax to sales made after 1231-19. It would also postpone the start of the uh, Cadillac plan tax. If any of you think that this is ever going to get <laughs> get implemented, I think we're all crazy. Uh, they keep kicking this one down the road, but uh, they that is of course a tax that imposed on high cost group health coverage that's delayed another two years to plan starting after 1231 of 2021, and then the uh, postponement of the 
the start date of the ACA health insurance fee, and that affects all health insurers. They are taxed on, it's a proportionate to premiums and market share, but uh, that looks like it could be delayed until plans after 1231 of 19. So all of this certainly impacts uh, what we do for a living and could have adverse or, you know, great effects on rates moving forward. And of course, within that is the additional uh, continuing resolution to fund CHIP. So again, that article is included in your handout, so you can print that out, or if you're not able to do that, let me know. I'm happy to email it to you. Um, just of note as well, um, I did mention it last year, last year, last week, uh, it's not in my agenda for today, but just a reminder, Forms 1095B and C are now due to be provided to covered individuals no later than March 2nd. Uh, the original deadline was July, I'm sorry, January 31st. Form 1095B, which is the form insurers provide to covered individuals, who were insured on uh, MEC plans in the small group market or individual market off exchange, uh, that's not affected. They will um, you know, still have the same deadline. And note that the deadline to provide information reporting for 2017 to the IRS has not been extended. Those deadlines remain February 28th for paper filers and April 2nd for electronic filers. Uh, this information is going to be in the newsletter. It did come out um, from Highmark, so uh, just be mindful of that. There's a, a blast that also just came in this morning from Capital Blue Cross talking about their new EOBs. They're simplifying their EOBs, no confusing insurance language. There's going to be one envelope for all visits that would be incurred within a 14-day calendar year period. Um, they say that it's going to show who paid what, what's still owed, and by whom and an easy to read layout with additional resources. Uh, this is going, if you've not received it already from Capital, uh, it will be in my newsletter next week. They also have the 360 on reform, which is a publication that goes to employer group customers, and it's going to give information on the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Um, so I think that that's important information for your employer groups. Um, okay, so on to the first bullet point, January 24th at URL, which is next week. We are having a Lunch and Learn, starts at 11.30, and we're going to talk about the advantages to reference-based pricing with Starmark. So Starmark is one of our carrier partners. Uh, they do level-funded, self-funded programs that utilize Aetna or Cigna networks, but they also have a product that use, uses no network. Um, so your clients can go to any provider. There's a specific uh, percentage above Medicare that these providers agree to accept, which is always lower than the PPO negotiated rate. Um, if the providers decide that they don't want to accept this rate, that additional cost is never passed on to the employees or to the employer's claims reserves. So, uh, you know, if, if you're not familiar with these products, I think that it's certainly worth your time uh, to come out and have some lunch and learn uh, the basics of these programs so that you are well armed for your group health sales in 2018 and moving into 19. So the uh, registration link is in my newsletter and that will be coming out around 10 o'clock this morning. If you're interested, please sign up because we are getting pretty full. Um, National General short-term medical enrollees the ones, as of January 1st effective dates, your clients, as you're aware, can go in and choose four consecutive 89-day policies with one application, one click. <clears throat> However, for the subsequent policies, they are required to go in and um, verify and e-sign the verification to activate the subsequent policies. <clears throat> Pardon me. They do this at vipmembermembenefits.com. Be the clients that have not done their cert uh, e-certification for their subsequent policy, and, and there may not be many because it is an 89-day policy. We're only on day 18, um, but uh, National General will be reaching out to these insureds that have not verified 
or completed their verification, reminders will be sent 45 days and 15 days prior to the member's scheduled first policy term end date. And they're going to start going out actually this week um, to the enrollees as a reminder. So if you do have folks that you wrote on these short-term medical products with National General, that's just a reminder. If you get a call from your clients, let them know that they do have to do the e-signature uh, to activate those subsequent policies. Um, I think that is about it. Um, a lot going on certainly at the state and local or state and um, federal level, so we'll keep tuning in and trying to figure out <laughs> what direction our uh, country will take and our state will take with the ACA law. At this point, the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, still stands. The only thing that has been eliminated is the individual tax penalty for 2019. Um, but again, the law still stands, so the carrier still has to ad adhere to the policy parameters of the ACA. There is supposed to be an executive order coming out to allow carriers to have um, more latitude in creating plans that don't necessarily meet the ACA guidelines. Um, and of course, logic predicts that they'll be less expensive, possibly more attractive to uh, the folks that don't need maternity, don't need in-house mental nervous. Um, so again, we'll keep watching for that. If you have not heard about our Orion program, uh, which is really just a formalized referral program, uh, clearly the folks on this call are uh, in the segment of, of group health, individual health, Medicare. But if you have life opportunities or you don't do Medicare or annuities, we have a team here that is ready, willing, and able to help you to expand your, your carrier or your, your product offerings, if you will, and also increase your revenue. So um, there is a commission split on that. If you have any interest in learning more about the program, please reach out to me and I'm happy to explain it. Um, I am uh, you know, going to say once again that I thank you for your partnership and for the business that you choose to do with URL. It's truly appreciated. And, uh, you know, we, we like to form good, solid, loyal relationships here at URL and, um, you know, are, have been very blessed with the agents that have chosen, again, to do business with us. So if you don't know about our agency, again, I'm happy to talk to you about it. The, the beginning of the new year is always a, a good, good time to kind of reevaluate your current partnerships and uh, maybe look at new partnerships and possibly with URL. So reach out to me. I'm happy to uh, talk to you about what we offer. Um, just as, as uh, a reminder, while you're formulating your questions, the next webinar is Thursday, January 25th. So I look forward to seeing you then. So let's see what type of questions. Um, Mike says, National General short-term medical policies, if client pays premium with credit card, the life association fee seems to continue past the plan expiration date. How or what to do to cancel other than flag to check later? Um, you're right, Mike. There's the life association fee, and that continues. That's a monthly fee. So you, if, if the policy expires and you don't renew it or rewrite, excuse me, you don't rewrite it, um, then they actually, your clients actually have to cancel that life association fee. Um, and... You know, there's really no easy way about that. Uh, it's, it's a bit clunky, I think, but unfortunately, that's what has to happen. They have to cancel um, that association uh, themselves. And Jay says, is there any word on short-term medical going back 90 days and going beyond, excuse me, 90 days and possibly back to 12 months? There's a lot of talk about it, Jay. And I think that that possibly will happen. I know that National General has come out and said that if there is a change in the law, that they're prepared to um, convert all of the four poppers, you know, the 89-day policies, the four 89-day policies into one policy. Um, but at this point, there's nothing definitive uh, that I know of that is changing that right now. Uh, Mike says, National General short term, will agent get notification of client having to enter the website to continue policy coverage, or do we need to wait for the client call or check status ourselves? 
you will not be included with that mic. So I would say definitely look at your client base. Uh, if you need help with that, we're happy to, to you know, help you with a list of, of your clients uh, so that you can set up reminders and tasks. I think that when your clients get it, it will be possibly confusing enough that they're going to give you. You're going to be their first line of attack. <laughs> Um, and that looks like all of the questions we have for today. As always, I truly appreciate every, everyone joining in. Uh, here's my contact information. Happy to talk to you about anything we discussed today in further detail. And again, if you can't read this uh, handout and want to uh, have the article, shoot me an email, debw at urlinsgroup.com, and I will forward that article to you. So until then, until next week on the 25th, I thank you all for joining in, and I wish you all a great balance of the week and a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.